So you wouldn't usually think of Georgia O'Keeffe as a precisionist artist, but in fact she is. She's of course an artist and painter born in 1887 in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, and then like most people from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, she immediately moves away. She's known for her striking flower paintings and other captivating works. She's probably one of the better known uh, American artists of the 20th century. And she'll find an advocate in the famed photographer and gallery owner, Alfred Stieglitz, who turns up yet again. He showed her work to the public for the first time in 1916 at his gallery 291. They'll marry about eight years later, and the two formed a professional and personal partnership that would last until his death in, 18, er, in 1946. After frequently visiting New Mexico uh, since the 1920s, O'Keefe will move there for good in 46 after Stieglitz dies and explore the area's rugged landscapes in quite a few of her works. But one of her earlier works, or at least one of the earlier works that we're going to look at, is from her series of images of New York, and this is the radiator building, Night. So this is an oil painting by O'Keefe, and this is a night view of the American radiator building. Here we're seeing an actual picture of the American radiator building at night. And this piece belongs to a series of New York's landscapes that she paints between 1925 and 1930, insisting on the theme of skyscrapers. And this is going to be important because skyscrapers to her and to the precisionists is, again, a North American invention, one that attracts interest and admiration worldwide, one sort of a monument that we can point to, just like the Egyptians would point to their pyramids and the Greeks would part, point to the Parthenon and the Romans to the Colosseum, Americans can point to the skyscraper, and she's trying to get that across. Now, with straightforward and basic resources, O'Keefe managed to portray in this series what some have considered to be New York's very image. Now, when we look up close, we'll notice that everything is very binary here, especially the lights in the windows. They're either there or they're not. And this may reflect new computer card technology at the time, which is also binary. There's no halfway, there's no hanging chad. It's either there or it's not. In this image, two features are actually superimposed. Uh, so we've got elements here that are superimposed, elements that can't exist, such as the letter, the word Alfred Stieglitz, which you see over to the left. And as we look at it, so much of this is superimposed and unrealistic. So the building is obviously added to the lights here, and we have almost a factory smokestack here. And it's only from one building, not from all of them, which we would expect if this were, say, a winter's night. She's basically creating a collage of New York. She's not interested in showing you an actual scene apart from the central structure, the radiator building. Rather, she's trying to give you a sense of New York as she knows it, this glowing metropolis lit at night. Um, to her, all of these elements come together and create the image of a modern city at the turn of the 20th century. So it's not about capturing New York itself. It's not capturing something realistic. It's putting something together to give us a sense of what New York really is in a single image in a way that we can't really do with photography, which is really an interesting way of looking at it, considering Stieglitz's role in her life and his interest in photography. He's always taking pictures, which are ultimately something honest and something real, something very different from these works. Now, something to keep in mind, Stieglitz will be behind O'Keefe moving away from these images. She really likes these New York images, and there are a number of them that she does. But she's more famous for something else, and arguably, Stieglitz is responsible for that because he'll ask her not to create these anymore and instead move in a very different direction. <laughs> 